All right. It is Tuesday the 10th. Tomorrow is Veterans Day. Uh, what a great day we're going to have. We are going to go through, continue to go through John 16. Um, lots of good stuff in that. Um, I hope you're joining us today on uh, live. If you are, the best place to go for that is myht.higherthings.org. So myht.higherthings.org. Uh, hit that live Bible uh, study, and that's where we always are. Uh, tomorrow, remember a programming note that we have our um, Thursday fireside chat at 1130. So um, uh, tomorrow's Wednesday. Thursday, we have the fireside chat at 1130. Um, lots going on there. Sweet. Um Lots going on there. All right. So let's take a look at the text. Uh, Jesus is in his, um, he's, you know, sort of lining up, uh, preparing for his departure on the cross and also um, his ascension. Either one is a good one. Oh, well, thank you. Um, you know, funny story. I did not uh, realize that it was a thousand video shorts. Or um, that's kind of crazy. Uh, so, yeah, I didn't realize that, or I would have made a big deal about it. Um, all right, let's hit the text. Let's hit the text. A little while longer. And you will no longer see me. And again, in a little while, you will see me. Um, this begins a section in which the Lord makes reference. He, he repeats, uh, this sentence is repeated three times, very Hebraically. Um, remember Hebrew, that we have this, the, the section is repeated over and over and over again. So um, uh, very sort of Hebrew-minded way of, of speaking. Um A little while longer and you will see me no longer. As in, I will die for you. And not in the prince way. I would die for you. Um, not, not in the prince way, but... Uh, <laughs> don't have to be rich. Um, no, in a, in a Jesus-y way. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to die on the cross for your sins and the sins of the whole world. And you're going to see me no longer. But in a little while, you will see me. So um, and that's after his resurrection. Now, this also is used at the end of the toward the end of the Easter season, where again it means the same thing, only in reference to Jesus's ascension. So a little while, and you will see me no longer, and a little while you will see me. Um, that's uh, that's what's going on. So um, is this the um, hi Cheryl? Is this the um, the, the crucifixion or is this the ascension? My answer would be yes. Um, it very clearly, time-wise, is very clearly his death. But then um, there's a turn in which it becomes, it, it can be understood as his ascension. And it is to our advantage that he goes away because if he goes away, he'll send the Father. That's his ascension. Okay? A little while you will see me no longer and a little while you will see me. So his disciples, some of them, <laughs> what I love is that they're like, uh, what's he talking about? Or, or from the 70s, what you talking about, Willis? What you talking about, Jesus? Um, some of his disciples said to one another, uh, what is this that he says to us? A little while and you'll see me no longer. Um, and then a little while you'll see me. And then because I go to the Father. So they repeat the sentence again. And so they said, what does this you mean by a little while? We do not know what you're talking about. So, like, can you explain it for us? Jesus knew that they wanted to answer him. Why? How does he know that they wanted, um, how does he know that they wanted to ask him that? He knows that they wanted to ask him that because he's God. 
And so he knew that they were going to ask him that. And so he answers it preemptively. A little while and you will see me again. And again in a little while you will see me. Amen, amen, I say to you, you will weep and lament and the world will rejoice. You will reap and you will lament. You will sing a dirge. You'll sit around, you'll be like, sad songs, they say. So much. Yeah, so you'll sing sad songs. Donald, let's go Mets. Um, you will weep and you will lament. But the world will rejoice. But the cosmos will rejoice. Why will the cosmos rejoice? Because he's dead. And they wanted to kill him for literally 16 chapters. I don't think he, I think, he, I think he got out of the first chapter before they wanted to kill him. But by chapter two, they wanted him dead. And, and so the word, you will weep and you will lament. Oh, my Lord has died. Do you have any questions about this? Just take a look at, at um, Mary Magdalene on Easter morning when she thinks he's dead. You will weep and lament. The world will rejoice. You will be sorrowful. But your sorrow will be turned to joy. How? Because of the resurrection. Because of the resurrection. Because of the ascension and the return of Jesus. Which is it? Yes. I mean, it's, you will weep. And, the, and lament, and the world will rejoice. Um, you will be sorrowful, but your sorrow will be turned to joy. So, when a woman gives birth, she has sorrow, for her hour has come. Which, again, um, which, again, um, Now, hour is compared to a woman giving birth. Um, the cross is compared to a woman giving birth. Uh, as creation mourns with these sort of birth pains, um, he's like, look, this is what it's like. When a woman gives birth, she has sorrow because her hour has come. But when she has delivered the baby, she no longer remembers the anguish for the joy of a child being born into the world or joy of a man being born into the world. And so um, you've got this sort of um, sorrow now, joy later mentality. And uh, look, I, I can't speak to this personally because I, I've, I've, I've never had a baby in my belly. Um, but I can I can just simply say that that um, everyone I've ever visited and every every woman that I've ever visited who was in the hospital waiting to give birth, a um, lot of pain, a lot of pain, big giant head, yeah, you know the rest. But when the baby comes, the only time that the the, the pain gets brought up is is for guilt's sake. Yeah, right. What Felicity said. So the same with the death of Christ. We're sad. We're sorry. We're we're um, we're hurting. Uh, right. Um, Pastor Lestico is correct. Um, I always feel a little awkward with this. She no longer remembers line. I heard too many birth pang stories. And my mother, when I was younger, was like, nine months, I pour you. 20 hours of labor. And you said this to me. Uh, but I mean, that was only when I had done something wrong. And I, which was hardly ever because I was my mother's angel. Um, so also you have sorrow now. You have lupine now, which is, 
which is sorrow or grief or pain. So you have sorrow or grief or pain now. Uh, but I will see you again. And your hearts will rejoice. And no one will take your joy from you. So again, I think this is, you, you want to sort of, um, you want to take this for its full gift, okay? And the full gift of this is, the full giftedness of this is, he is such a God as to save even you. And his departure, and we all grieve his departure, not just the disciples, but there's not a one of us who doesn't look and say at one point, I wish you were here, Jesus. And he is there. But then we say, no, no. What I mean by this is, I wish you were here. Well, I am here. No, I mean, I wish you were here. Uh, Nathan, I don't have a problem with connecting. Blessed are those who are who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Um, with one caveat, and that is um, sort of hermeneutically, the thing to do is to stick in the same gospel. And so, yes, I would make a connection to that, but I would make a connection to that in a second or third sense. The best re cross references are those that are in the same um, in the same book. So you want to go book author, and then outside of that. Um, for John, it's, it's um, then Gospels. Uh, for the Synoptics, you can make that jump sooner, but um, with John, he's, it's not. But again, Nathan, great, great connection. Um, same sort of thing in a different Gospel. So um, you have sorrow now, uh, but I will see you again, and your hearts will rejoice. Your cardia will rejoice. You can almost recognize it as cardia right there. You can see it. That's, that's cardia. And um, no one, no one will take your joy from you. Uh, Donald, I'm not going to debate whether or not um, a kidney stone is as painful as a... Um, as a uh, uh, given birth, because I, I think, I think women can tell us that, but I'm, I'm, I'm not touching that. I'm not going to touch that with a 10 foot pole. So wait, though, just, 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 let's just take a second here and sort of take this verse in. No one will take your joy from you. Not, you'll have ups and downs. Life is a highway. I won't ride it all night long. No, no. In Christ, in your baptism, in the forgiveness of sins, in the one born of Mary, you have comfort. And comfort that no one um, can take away from you. Because it's comfort in Jesus. Comfort in the forgiveness of sins. Comfort in the resurrection of the Christ. It's the take they are goods, fame, child, and life. These all be gone. The victory has been won. The kingdom ours remaineth. That's what that means. That's what that means. So you'll have sorrow now, but your sorrow will return to joy. And that joy, no one will take from you. And this joy is also good for Lutherans to remember because, you know, um, like I like to laugh with you that we love our favorite season is Lent. Second is Advent. We get to be the crabby, repentant people that we've always wanted to be because we think, you know, the more serious, the more Christian. We are ways. We are ways of, 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 of squelching joy. We kill dreams in the Lutheran church. No. No, be before, before it was cool to be joyfully Lutheran, I was trying to tell people over and over again that the scriptures are full. The second, um, the second fruit of the spirit. Again, Nathan, this is a, a third or fourth connection. Notice it's outside the book. But the second fruit of the spirit is joy. 
And so um, when you when you sort of want to. Again, it's a law thing that we think the more serious, the more somber, the more the more um, the more reserved we are, <laughs> the more Midwestern we are, the more more Christian we are. And that, that just simply isn't the case. The joy of the Lord is our strength. And here he very clearly says, he very clearly says, did I say there clearly said? He very clearly says here that um, no one will take your joy from you. And so it's, 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 it's literally okay to be joyful as a Christian. All right. I, 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 I get we are on verse 22 of chapter 16, Pastor Rake. Um, and so this, 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 um, you, we, we, we want to sort of understand that, that joy is okay. It's okay to be joyfully Christian. Now, can you, can you overdo that? Sure. There's a whole Phariseeism of, of joy and smiling as you eat, um, uh, uh, life's poo. Um, it tastes great. It's getting better all the time. But I mean, that's, not necessarily um, that's not necessarily Christian either. We weep with those who weep, we mourn with those who mourn, and we're joyful with those who are joyful. So we don't go to somebody's bedside when they've been told that, that they have, yeah, tidings of great joy. You got it. Um, you got it, Mark. We don't go to somebody's bedside and like, oh, you just got uh, um, you just got cancer. Joyful, joyful, we adore thee. You know, no, we weep with those who weep. We mourn with those who mourn. Um, nobody likes you, Pastor Loftus. Take your war eagle and go. No, no, no. We love you, Pastor Loftus. Uh, we love you, Pastor Loftus. This, this is your year. Um, we are awful. Anyway, so. In that day, you will ask nothing of me. Now, this could mean uh, two, two things. This could mean, as the the as the text note says, from the Concordia Study Bible, um, that we're having a reunion here. Jean uh, remembering her um, uh, Pastor Loftus when she goes to New Orleans, but but this could mean that um, you ask nothing because you can go directly to the Father. Um, this could also mean at the ascension, because of the, um, when, 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 on the last day, we, we've got nothing to ask for because we have Jesus. Um, whatever you ask the Father in my name, He will give give it to you. Uh, so you don't have to bounce off of of um, yeah, we're moving right along, moving right along, um, Muppets. You don't have to use Jesus like he's a saint in the Roman church. That you just get him to pray for you and you send the prayer chain into the life of the world to come and everything works out. You can ask the Father through Jesus in my name. In my name is in your baptism, in the word, in the body and blood of Jesus. The gifts give the spirit who works faith that goes to the Father and asks him. Um, you know that you can ask, uh, my kids know that they can ask me for anything and I will do the best that I can to give it to them. Um, I will. I will. And if I'm evil, and this Nathan, again, is one of those um, third or fourth connections because it's in a different gospel. If I'm evil and know how to give good gifts um, to my children, how much more will my Father in heaven Give good gifts to me, oligopistoi, ye of little faith. Because of Christ, you can boldly go to the Father and ask him for all things. And you don't have to treat Jesus like this is, um, uh, I've said this before, when I when I first got to, to McHenry, and I loved my time in Illinois, they, were all, they would always be like, um, we got a guy for that. We got a guy for that. And there was, it was always about who you asked rather than, than you could pay full price, but you want, but we got a guy for that who, who give us, who give us a deal on it. You don't, you don't have to go and find a deal with Jesus now. 
You don't have to do that because of his suffering and death for you. Because God loves you in the giving up of his son, you don't have to beg and plead God with, with Jesus to go to the Father. You ask the Father in Jesus, which means you ask the Father in your baptism, in the word, in the body and blood. True story. True story. Um, and not, he might give it to you. He will give it to you. But it's all connected to in to anomati, which is in my name. So everything is connected to his name. His name, which we'll call upon, which is the second commandment. We should fear and love God so we do not curse, swear, you satanic arts, lie or deceive by his name, but call upon it in every trouble, pray, praise, and give thanks. That's what he wants us to do. He wants to take his name and use his name to call on it. Now, our initial, um, our initial hear, hearing of this is we've just turned God into a slot machine that if we just ask Jesus for, um, uh, ask in Jesus' name, we'll get everything. But you will. Everything you need. Earlier, Jesus did say, you can ask anything in my name and I will do it. And now he says, ask anything in my name and he will do it. And this, I guess, says, sort of hinting as Pastor Rake, the connection between the Father and the Son. They're on the same page. And the page that they're on is saving you. God wants to save you in Jesus. He wants to be the God who, who saves. That's what he wants to do. That's the kind of God he is. The God who saves. Until now, you have asked nothing in my name. Ask, and you will receive. And why? So that your joy will be filled. Ask, listen. In the uh, Old Testament lesson this weekend, what saved the children of Israel from certain destruction was, um, oh, I'm sorry, Felicity, the school's going on at 1130. The, the kid, parents are picking up their kids. And so um, one of the kids needs to be, needs to go with his mother and he's, he's being fun. That brought Thor out on high alert, you know. So what was my train of thought? Oh, notice he doesn't, what saved the children of Israel in the Old Testament lesson for this weekend with the, um, worship of the golden calf was that God was faithful to his promises. Moses reminds God. Remember, God says, um, God says, go down. Your people are up to mischief. Your people, um, you, the ones you brought out of Egypt, Moses, you just leave me alone so I may burn my rage against them. I'm going to destroy them and I'm going to make you a great nation. And um, Moses is like, my people, they're your people, God. And you, you, you might consider that shall the Egyptians say that you took them out of Egypt to destroy them in the, to destroy the children of Israel in the, in the wilderness. Um, and so what saves them is that God's faithful to his promise. Here, what, what the reason why God answers your prayers is the same reason why parents um, uh, it's a very Old Testament thing Jane um, we can't rip our garments um, and so we rub our faces uh, but the reason why that parents give gifts to their children why Christmas why birthdays why Santa why all of this is because we want our kids to be happy and your father in heaven wants his children to be happy and, and, and not just happy, but completely happy. Uh, there's a blue, there's a, um, 
there's a perfect here, a perfect passive. Um, pe play romine, uh, an action which has been completed in the past, that your joy may be full, may be complete. He wants you to be so happy that you're like, you're like um, post Thanksgiving dinner and you're sitting back and you're like, I am stuffed like the pig. You know, um, sorry for shaming pigs. I was incredibly, terribly, um, unpolitically correct and fat shaming pigs there. But you know what I'm saying? Um, that, you know, after, you know, after Thanksgiving dinner, all you really want to do is lay down and take a nap. Um, he wants, he gives you gifts in order to make your life complete, in order to bring joy to you, in order to make you happy. That's the God that he is. And that's the God that he wants to be. And he won't be told otherwise, other than he's the God that wants to save you. He's the God that loves you. And so he wants you like you are post Christmas to, to, to be full of joy. That's what he wants. He wants you to be full of joy. That your joy may be full, may be complete. That's what he wants. That's what he wants. And again, uh, Nathan pointing us back to the synoptics. If we who are evil know how to good, give good gifts to our children, how much more does our Father in heaven know how to give good gifts to us? All right. I mean, that's that's it. But you can ask anything in my name and the Father will give it to you. Because my father and I are on the same page and we want you happy. We want you forgiven. We want you at peace with God and one another. And that is the great comfort of the ascension is that at the right hand of God is the one who bears those wounds. The one who died for us and rose for us. He lives for us at the very right hand of God and through him he gives all good things. All good things. And so we don't have to worry about Tricking God into loving us and tricking God into being good to us. God is good to us in his son. God is good to us in Christ. And what joy, what peace, what happiness is ours in Jesus. At the right end of God is our Savior. Is our Savior. Think about that. Just, just, just sort of ponder that reality. How unbelievable is that? That the God who is at the very right hand of God is our, the, the God who is uh, God's right hand man, the one who he does everything through is our savior. If that doesn't make your joyful, I don't know what will. I do not know what will. That's the God who saves. That's Jesus. All right, we're going to um, end today on verse um, 24. We will pick up verse 25 tomorrow. Remember to go to higherthings.org slash giving and give today. Many of you are loving this Bible study. I got a nice letter yesterday. It was a nice, nice letter up from um, from Wisconsin. I got a ni another nice letter from Wisconsin um, from one of our, our regular Bible study participants. Just give it just it was nice to get a, a, a non-nasty four page letter. This was a, um, a Thanksgiving I'm thankful for you, Pastor. But I want to I want to make sure that you that you do go to higherthings.org slash giving and give today. If you love what's going on in higher things, in the passing of the faith to the next generation, and finding good materials for Christian youth is hard today. So go ahead, go to higherthings.org and give today. Have a great day. I will see you tomorrow.